SpaceX has changed the game of building rockets by building their entire factory around their prototypes, turning Boca Chica into the wild west of rocketry. In this video, we'll be exploring the differences between the Starship and the Falcon 9. Do watch this video until the end, and don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already. In terms of the rocket engines of both space vehicles, the Falcon 9 has 9 Merlin 1D engines in the very first stage, and just one vacuum-optimized Merlin MVAC, in the second stage. These Merlin engines are open cycle, which means they have a smaller sized rocket engine referred to as a gas generator. The exhaust from this generator is used to spin a turbine, which drives the main propellant pumps. With the sea level Merlin, the exhaust is hurled overboard. However, the vacuum engine in the second stage moves the gas through the nozzles, so as to provide a layer of cooler gas that will keep the extended nozzle from melting. For the Starship, a whole new rocket engine was invented. SpaceX went on to develop a full-flow staged combustion cycle engine, known as the Raptor. The Raptor is a very complex engine, because the exhaust gas which would usually be dumped overboard after spinning the turbine is transferred to the main combustion chamber and used for thrust. Apart from this fact, there are two other little rocket engines that have their own turbines and pumps. One of these engines is rich in fuel, while the other is rich in oxygen, and the exhausts are also pumped into the main combustion chamber. As the fuel and the oxygen arrive in the combustion chamber, the hot gas is produced, and it increases the efficiency largely. The Raptor is one of the most advanced rocket engines in the world at the moment, and is still going through development. The Orbiter version of the Starship is built to have six Raptors, three sea level and three largest vacuum optimized engines. The super heavy booster will eventually carry over 25 engines. Since the engines are relatively small, many of them can be squeezed at the bottom of the rocket. The fuels of both the Starship and the Falcon 9 also differ. The Falcon 9 runs on rocket-grade kerosene popularly known as RP-1 and liquid oxygen LOX, which forms a combustion called Kerolox. In the case of the Starship, the Raptor engines run on liquid methane and liquid oxygen, also known as Methalox. Liquid methane has the advantage of being cleaner than RP-1 as it doesn't leave any soot in the engine. Liquid methane can also be more efficient even though it is not as dense as the RP-1, making the tanks a bit larger in volume. Other consumables on the Falcon 9 Inside the smaller tanks of the Falcon 9, there are three more consumables, which make the Falcon 9 a lot more complex than the Starship. The three consumables are 1. Helium Each tank in the Falcon 9 holds a set of composite overwrapped pressure vessels COPVs. These black cylinders have compressed helium with a pressure of over 380 bar. These highly pressurized tanks maintain the pressure in the propellant tanks. Whenever the, the fuel is drained, helium is used to replace it, and this keeps the propellant flowing. Starship is not going to have any use for such tanks at all. This is because after landing on Mars, it won't be so easy to refill the helium tank. The Starship will rather use methane, which can be produced on the surface. Starship's mechanism will be different as the propellant tanks will simply be pressurized autogenously. This means that the engine are still running, and they will also be pumping some gaseous fuel and oxidizer back into their individual tanks. The pressure will be maintained by allowing some of the fuel to boil and releasing all excess pressure. In this way, the temperature will be maintained as the boil-off cools the fuel. 2. TTEB The second thing that the Falcon 9 has which Starship lacks is the ignition fluid. The Falcon 9 makes use of TTEB, trithalborane. This mixture is said to be pyrophoric. That is, it ignites without a spark when oxygen comes into contact with it. Once the Falcon 9 pumps are spinning up, TTEB is injected into the combustion chamber, and combustion starts while fuel is being poured into it, before it enters a stable combustion state. This mixture is very important for the Merlin engines to be able to restart. If the fluid is not present, the engines will not be able to reignite. Just as there will be no need for the helium tanks on the Starship, the Starship uses a spark ignition. This is a sort of giant spark plug that starts the ignition process. Nitrogen Another propellant used in the Falcon 9 is compressed nitrogen. This is actually compressed air. Compressed nitrogen is also used for the cold gas thrusters on the Falcon 9 interstage. Two packs of four little thrusters sit on the booster stage and are used to flip it around as the boosters coast before re-entry. For the Starship, only one main propellant has to be transported, so Starships will use hot gas thrusters which will be powered by boiled off methane and oxygen gas. 
In essence, the different fuels and cycle types contribute to Starship's upgraded performance compared to the Falcon 9. It is also important that we take a look at the performance of both the Falcon 9 and the Starship and how they compare in different areas. The Merlin engine on the Falcon 9 is able to reach a wonderful amount of thrust at 845 kN and 981 kN in a vacuum. However, the Raptor engine in its beginning stages can run at about 1650 kN at sea level and can achieve around 1800 kN in a vacuum. The Merlin is quite efficient, with 282 seconds of impulse at sea level and 311 seconds in a vacuum. The Raptor, however, is a lot more efficient and can achieve about 325 seconds at sea level and almost 350 seconds in a vacuum. Chamber Pressure A lot of the great performance from the Starship is because of the chamber pressure inside the main combustion chamber. Once the chamber pressure is higher, it means that the engines are giving more thrust and getting more efficient. The Merlin achieves 116 bar of pressure, while the Raptor is operationally at around 275 bar currently, but has hit the 330 bar on the test stand and will soon be up to 350 bar, which is the goal for SpaceX. There is one more area that Merlin currently outperforms the Raptor. The Raptor may not be able to meet the Merlin engine because it has the highest thrust to weight ratio of any liquid fueled rocket engine ever. Also, the Merlin engine has a thrust to weight ratio of around 200 to 1 while the Raptor currently has around 107 to 1, but increasing to 130 to 1. Of course, Elon Musk still believes that they'll be able to catch up with the Merlin. Size and Construction Starship is very large compared to the Falcon 9, which is actually a decent sized rocket, and it's really hard to appreciate how big it actually is until you're standing underneath it. The Starship is 9 meters in diameter, while the Falcon 9 is 3.7. The Falcon 9 stands at 70 meters tall, with this first stage at 45 meters tall, while the second stage and the nose cone take up the space of the other 25. The Super Heavy Booster will stand at over 75 meters tall. Then, put the Starship up a stage on top of the Super Heavy Booster and the entire stack will stand at 122 meters tall. That's over 10 meters taller than the monster Saturn V. Think of the massive size in addition to their different engines, with different performance figures and different fuels, and what it translates to is Starship can put so much more weight into orbit. The Falcon 9 can take 22,800 kilograms into LEO when expanded, or 15,600 kilograms when reused, as it does for the Starlink missions. It can send 8,300 kilograms into geostationary transfer orbit when expended, or about 7,000 kilograms when reused. Falcon Heavy can also get about 25,000 kilograms into geostationary transfer orbit when fully expended. It can also get about 13,000 kilograms when doing the 2 times RTLS, 1 times drone ship landing. But Starship will soon be able to take over 150,000 kilograms up into LEO. Yes, that will be more payload mass than any other rocket ever made, even beating the Saturn V, which could only put 145,000 kilograms into LEO. It will do this while still being fully reusable. Starship can also put a solid 21,000 kilograms into geostationary transfer orbit, despite having to lug its own huge dry mass out there. This is lower than what you can put in an expendable Falcon Heavy, but expending a Super Heavy booster comes with a whole lot more space. However, expending a Super Heavy booster is not part of the plan. Since the whole rocket is reusable, Starship has to take its heavy flaps, landing gear, the payload fairing, and all six engines with it where it goes. Starship makes up for that with its orbital refueling. If Starship is refueled with just one tanker, it can get that GTO payload capacity right back up to that 150,000 kilogram mark. And if you refuel it enough, it can take 150,000 kilograms all the way to the moon or Mars. This simply changes everything. Payload Another huge upgrade for the Starship is its massive payload. The Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy share the same bearing, which is about 5 meters wide and 14 meters tall, with a total reusable volume of 145 cubic meters. Despite being able to take almost 10 times as much payload into orbit as the Falcon 9, Starship should cost less than the Falcon 9 to launch. Given that it's a fully reusable rocket, it should basically only be the cost of fuel and personnel time but we're talking potentially way less than Falcon 9. SpaceX is hoping it'll cost less to launch than a Falcon 1 even. In fact, it very well might end up being the cheapest ride to orbit. We fully expect Starship will have some stumblings along the way. 
and some valuable lessons will be learned too. There will likely be more explosions along the path to orbit, and even once in operation. Remember, the Falcon 9 history has not always been smooth sailing either. Thank you for watching this video and while you're here, go ahead and click on one of these videos on your screen right now to enjoy some more juicy information waiting for you. See you there!